I'm going to talk about the impact of copper sulfate footbath use in eastern Wisconsin's manure soil and forage copper concentrations. And uh, to just introduce myself, I'm Erica Bierstrom. I'm a regional dairy educator for Extension in uh, Kiwani, Door, and Brown counties. So that's in the Green Bay area. So why do we use copper sulfate? Uh, it's because of digital dermatitis. Digital dermatitis is a chronic disease. It is transmittable from one cow to the next, and it causes lameness and reduces productivity in our cows. And an estimated 70% of U.S. dairy herds have digital dermatitis, and 95% of our large herds have it. It rapidly spread in the 1990s as herds grew and they consolidated. And copper sulfate is a low cost product that works well for managing digital dermatitis. And it's also effective in cold temperatures, which is where um, quite a bit of our dairy herd in the United States is in cold weather areas. So it, it works and it does a good job. Uh, foot bath use in Wisconsin, the Dairyland Initiative, which is a division essentially of our veterinary school in Madison, recommends that copper sulfate be used at a two to five percent concentration. There are other types of solutions that work for foot baths as well. Uh, formalin, which is a carcinogen, so you know there's goods and bads, uh, zinc, sulfate, and premixes. It, they also recommend that it be changed after 150 to 300 cows that pass through the foot bath and offered at a minimum of three times per week. We did a survey in 2016 in, at 45 dairy farms in northeastern Wisconsin, and copper sulfate was indeed the most common type of foot bath solution that was used on those farms. And the concentrations, we see here that 40% of the farms that responded were using it within the vet school's recommendations, 4 to 6%. But unfortunately, 27% of those farms were using it at a three time to almost 10 times higher recommendation than the vet school re recommends. And then the frequency, typically we're going to see one to three times per week, 40% of the farms were uh, using it at one to three times per week. But sometimes if there is an outbreak of digital dermatitis, people will ramp it up and use it every day, use a foot bath every day. So 33% of the farms were using it seven up to seven times a week. Copper in soils and plants. Uh, we know that copper is an elemental. Uh, it's elemental and it naturally occurs in soil and it's rarely deficient in Wisconsin, but we don't have a lot of background information on it. It binds with soil organic matter and clay. And this is the big, one of the big things to remember is that once it's on the farm, it stays on the farm until it's used by a plant. And so it stays there once it's in the ground. And it does have a negative impact on soil ecology. Plants have a uh, high in copper, uh, have impaired lateral root gro growth and seedling growth and potential for increased plant concentrations in the, co the copper in the plant and copper tolerance. So uh, we know that pasture grasses and peas have very low tolerance for copper toxicity. Corn has moderate and alfalfa is high in uh, small grains. Copper and dairy animals, dairy cattle have a dietary requirement for copper and dry and lactating cows are 13 to 15 parts per million and calves and heifers are a little bit higher according to NRC uh, at 15 to 25 parts per million. It can become toxic above 100 parts per million and jerseys for whatever reason uh, they accumulate copper in their livers faster than Holsteins do. Most of the copper that is taken into an animal is excreted but the rest does accumulate in soft tissues primarily in the liver. So in 2015, the Wisconsin Veterinary Diagnostic Lab did a study and found that copper accumulations in all ages of Wisconsin Holsteins, and it does cause liver damage. And when stressed, copper can be released from the liver into the bloodstream, causing red blood cell issues and death of that animal. Uh, Michigan State, did a, a survey essentially they collected information from livers they received over the course of nine years between 2007 and 2015 and their livers ranged in three parts per million to all the way up to almost 2,000 and adequate 
So if we were going to just look at regular normal livers, uh, would be in that 75 to 300. It starts getting at a concern level at 500 and toxicity risk at 850. Their mean was 432, and that'll come back up a little bit later. We did a survey last year on farm of copper levels in dairy farms in Wisconsin. So uh, we surveyed 20 dairies in eastern Wisconsin. And as you can see here with this map, um, that's where the dairies were. We did surveys of the tissue, of soil, and manure. And so the tissue, tissue samples would have been the top six inches of a plant and a whole plant of an alfalfa plant. And at so it, soil at six inches, 12 inches, two feet, and three feet. We did a pre-third crop sample as well of just the tissue, so the top six inches of alfalfa, and post-third crop soil if manure was applied after third crop. And that was taken at six and 12 inches. And those were tested at our UW lab in Madison. The herds themselves, they ranged between 190 and 406 or 4,600 lactating cows, again at 20 dairies in 12 Wisconsin counties. This is a very highly concentrated dairy area in Wisconsin. We have about uh, 1.275 million dairy cows in Wisconsin and about half of those cows are, uh, reside in those counties that are highlighted there. Uh, they were taken in a variety of soils, loam, silt loam, shallow bedrock, where I am here in northeastern Wisconsin, we have bedrock at the soil, and uh, a lot of clay as well. So our first crop alfalfa concentrations showed that, if you see here, that the tissues are in gray and the whole plant is in red, and the tissue itself was lower than the whole plant averages. So the tissue, the top six inches was lower than the entire plant copper concentrations. Just a little bit though. So you can see here we had 11 for the, the tissue sample and 12 for the whole plant. And NRC, their averages are a little bit lower and they do recommend again that 13 to 15 parts per million in feed. In an industry survey that was conducted in 2015, we're going to focus on Southeast and Northeast. And uh, their tissue samples showed that Northeast Wisconsin had 10.6 and Southeast had 11.8. So a little bit lower than what we had, just about in the, roughly in the same area. And the whole plant averages were a little bit uh, lower too, but roughly in the same range. And then compared to a 2005 UW survey, they had, I'll show you here, much, much lower of the copper in their alfalfa hay. And we think that it's a possibility that because we targeted the dairies that we were uh, wanting to survey that ours are much lower. And then this might've been because we also did this in an area where there are bigger herds that use a lot more copper sulfate. First and third crop, so we're comparing our first and third crop results. You can see here that third cut was higher in copper than the first uh, harvest. So first, first crop was 11.1 .1 and third was 15. And again, that's getting a little bit high on the recommendations from NRC. And I'll talk a little bit about why this may have happened a little bit later. So soil and manure copper concentrations, this is just kind of showing that, again, we have limited data. Again, there's not a, an issue with having too much copper yet, but as you see here in this graph here in this chart on the right side, the University of Vermont was monitoring how much copper was in manure between 1992 and 2006. And you can see that that graph is going straight up. It was just about 50 there when they started in 92 and it when they finished in 2006 was over 500. Uh, copper manure, um, manure copper, excuse me, in our averages was 373 and our range was quite large from 60 to 847. So it shows essentially that chart from Vermont in just in the range that we did in one season over the course of the fields that we were in. I was able to also participate in getting some 
uh, liver samples from one of our participating herds. It was the 4,600 cow dairy. I chose this dairy deliberately to be part of this study because I knew I could get livers from their uh, personal harvest facility they, they have on site. So I collected liver samples from 26 Holstein cows and they were collected uh, within two hours of harvest and they were in their lactations one through six and aged four to nine years. And those were sent to the Iowa State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab for heavy metals analysis. Uh, the conversions, as you recall, I, uh, Michigan State did their survey on their liver samples. Michigan State analyzes on heavy metal on a wet basis, Iowa State on a dry basis. So Iowa State gave me the conversion rate of 2.5. So all the numbers that I got back from Iowa State multiplied were multiplied by 2.5. This was the analysis of the herds that I had. Our low was from a seven-year-old cow, 230, and our high was from a four-year-old cow, 740. And our mean was three, 433. And going back to that Michigan State test from our results from several years ago, theirs was 432. So while this doesn't necessarily tell me a lot, this does tell me that it is a repeatable uh, result and it's probably pretty consistent if we did it again uh, we might see similar results and here are the cows here on the right side uh, it, you know our nine-year-old cow I, I guess I would have expected that the older the cow is the higher the copper concentration would be but it wasn't in this case again our, our highest was that four-year-old cow but you can see that um, the, the numbers do have they, they are up on the higher end when we're looking at that we're starting to think about concerns at 500 parts per million. I was also able to get forage analysis of this farm's six main TMR diets. And those diets were for the six to 12 month old calves, breeding and bred heifers, dry cow, close up, steam up cows, post fresh and lactating. And so these first two, six to 12 months, all of our calves, non-mature animals, they again have a little bit higher acceptable range for copper. And just to let you know that these animals also received 45% of their diet was refusals from the lactating herd. So if you're not familiar with the dairy industry, that's the feed they scrape up from the cows that they don't eat and then they mix it back in with fresh feed and feed it to the heifers. So again, here showing this farm was on the low end of their the acceptable ranges. Uh, they were sort of concerned about it. They, they didn't really know. They don't test for copper, but um, they were interested to see how that turned out. So again, this diet is low on the end of copper requirements and the livers are moderate in copper levels, but it's not necessarily correlated to age or lactation. So why are these livers in the moderate range? And why is the diet on the low end? That's just a question I had from that. So the recommendations for anyone who's working with dairies, know how much copper sulfate is being used on the dairy. If the copper applications, you monitor them, the buildup is gradual. So this is something that you kind of have to think about. You're not going to blow up your soil in one year from adding too much copper, but you, you need to be aware that it does build up over the course of it a year, five years, 10 years, and make sure that you're testing for that. And just to give you a little example here, so if we're talking about a thousand cow dairy at a 5% solution, so on the high end of the recommendations, and again, remember some of those farms were using 10 times the recommendations, in a foot bath, it's 96 square feet, it, with four changings for 1,000 cows, three times a week, we are potentially adding 3,900 pounds of copper to the soil in a year. Farm team's approach to kind of combat this, to monitor nutritionist, monitor forage for copper, reduce unneeded supplementations, monitor changes for forage copper levels, agronomists, again, monitor the soil, monitor manure for copper, manage applications, and maintain your soil pH and eliminate, eliminate copper fertilization. Veterinarians, efficient use, concentrations of copper, and foot bath frequency. Again, if you know that one of your farmers is using 10 times more than they should, dial that back because the big takeaway on that is less is more. More does not always equal more. It's not going to solve the problem by adding more. You need to use the recommendations. Maintain a hoof trimming schedule. One of the big things with this 
this disease with digital dermatitis is you can combat it a lot easier if you're looking at these cows feet more often and determining whether or not they have a problem before it starts and spot treat rather than the whole herd application. So then there was no relevance or correlation in the soil type compared to copper concentrations in this project. And third crop did show a higher copper concentration compared to first crop, which is likely due to the plant being shorter, less plant material. It's hotter and drier at the end of July, beginning of August when we're harvesting third crop. And plants have limited absorption capability. So once the copper is in the soil, it stays there unless the plant actually needs it. And limitations, we had a little bit on this. This is my intern, Taylor. Um, one of the limitations is it's very difficult to take soil samples in clay in August. And so that was her trying to get one of the soil probes in the ground in August in clay. And it was a lot of hard work. Um, we did target farms known to use copper sulfate foot baths, and most of the herds were more than 400 cows, therefore using more copper sulfate more often. And liver samples could have been analyzed at Michigan State, but uh, because of the proximity to getting it to Iowa State faster for us in this case, uh, we went with Iowa State. And just to show you, this is Taylor in one of the three uh, soil probes she bent doing this project, so we have some hard soil. Um, next steps, foot bath management survey. I was hoping to do that here with some farm, with the participating farms, liver biopsies, and possibly we have some big packing plants here in Green Bay. I could potentially get over there and get some more liver samples if we can source verify the cows. And are there other heavy metals to follow? Again, I said zinc sulfate was another option for a foot bath. Some people really love it. It has a lot of the same effects as copper sulfate, but it also will have the same effect in the soil where eventually there's going to be a toxic buildup.